Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more CNSL 5. Uh, we have got quite the series here. We're in game number three of the last match, the decider match of Group A in the round of 16. Our last Protoss, YSC, tries to stay in the tournament. He was able to take that game on Odyssey pretty easily. I think his style plus the strategy that Ample chose, you put those two together and it was meant to be. Uh, Ample, of course, over here, uh, generally our very aggressive Terran. Uh, questionable in that last game, the way that he tried to uh, utilize that third base. But, you know, if someone's not as as speed shuttle heavy uh, and you, you know, maybe your defense is good and you take down that first drop really well, maybe you have an advantage because your third is up just so quickly. That I mean, that makes sense. Like, I, I get it, right? Like... You normally can't get a third base nowadays in, in TVP until like 12 minutes. And so if you're getting it up and mining at like nine, it's going to make a huge difference if you can keep it going. It's just, I think the, the setup of that map doesn't allow that so well. Well, either way, we're on Allegro now. Uh, this is a pretty good map actually for Terran versus Protoss. Um, the layout of the bases, like the push distances in close spawns especially, can be quite nice for Terran once you start to max out. Uh, you can get over to your opponent's natural very quickly if you're close spawns, which in this game they are. So that might end up working out very well for Ample. Even some of the uh, earlier timing pushes, <laughs> you know, such as like a four factory, five factory, or six factory push that you do on two base, uh, those can be really, really nice here. Uh, as well, because again, that, that distance is not too much. It's kind of wide open. Very pushable indeed. Now, taking a look at our actual strategies, uh, this looks like a scout from Ample towards the bottom right, so it'll probably be an end scout. And then we have uh, the probe going cross map after Nexus first. So the thought process behind this generally is if they're cross spawn, you do a very greedy Nexus first with like one gate and gas quickly because the rush distance is so far for Terran. Uh, if it's not, you throw down the second gate more quickly because you know that it's very likely that a Marine SCV rush is coming. So let's see if he follows that general rule. Is he going to throw down that second uh, gateway? We'll see momentarily. He does have this kind of forward pylon. This will probably be utilized for a shield battery if he gets rushed. Forge. Okay, never mind. So it is going to be... He's basically what I said about the second gateway. He's utilizing that here for the forge, right? Where he's like, okay, you're not cross-spawn. I can't really go greedy. Let's just go for a cannon. Now, we saw from Ample already the way that he likes to deal with a uh, Forge Fast Expand. This is pretty far out, so he might he might actually duck down here and check what's up. Because he has to know something's missing right now. So let's see if he goes down and sees the Forge. He hasn't seen the Forge yet. This is actually incredibly important. Because if you go Marine SCV Vulture and there's a cannon, like you are going to regret it so badly. That, that can make the game end like almost instantaneously. Now he has seen, he has seen this, but his, like, uh, there's like a little bug. Okay, he sees the cannon warping in. So that's, that's what we're looking for. There's a little bug when you're watching replays that, like, look, when he goes out of range there. Uh, well, no, I guess, there you go. <laughs> there you go. See how it disappears? Okay, anyways, it's just, it's a weird thing about remaster. They never fixed it, but, uh, he knows that it's a cannon, and now suddenly his build order is kind of off like he went vulture he went marines and that's normally what you'll do to bust but again against the cannon it's not it's not a workable situation uh previously we saw him i, I believe it was against motive go for siege mode and mass marines off of one one factory which i think can be quite dangerous but if he if he gets it to work then he gets it to work now, three gates going up. There's already three zealots here, which are going to do excellently tanking-wise. Range on the way. This is kind of interesting, because I've seen this a couple times now where it's three gate. Whereas most of the forge fast expansions I've seen have gone into four gate, just to make sure that they have enough. Like, for instance, if you pop out four dragoons, you basically can kill a siege tank, right? Four dragoons, two volley a siege tank. So, like, if you're willing to take a lot of damage, maybe lose some, it's quite likely that you'll, you'll knock out 
<laughs> some of the, the strength behind the bush. Now, this does look to be exactly what we saw from Ample before. It looks like he wants to expand while getting ready to do it. Definitely is going to need to pull, like, I would say at least three SCVs with this. But it's like a funny situation. If this push doesn't do anything, the amount of money he's put into it and how small his production is, like, look, he doesn't have an armory. He doesn't have a sink factory or anything. This is really all about marine siege tank. But he is expanding behind it. So it's like this very weird amount of damage that can occur to allow the game to go on. So let's see how well he does. He actually he puts some serious damage onto a goon there. This one, the shield's already gone as well. All right, Siege is one. Definitely wants to start some bunkers. And his first bunker is in range of the photon cannon. So that's pretty painful. The Zealots come up for a flank. The Marines got way ahead of everything. Oh, man. This is absolutely crazy. Actually, this is the weirdest fight ever. The Marines are starting to pick off a lot of probes, but there's quite a few Dragoons left. And obviously the push is over. 23 probes against 26 SCVs, and this is about to finish. Okay, so that was a very weird amount of damage. Remember how I said that at the beginning, that like the, pu the, the situation is so bizarre that like there's a very weird amount of damage which will allow the game to go forward. If you look at this, he's got siege mode. He's got two tanks and two Marines, and his command center finished while he's up three workers. So Ample is fine. Like, if we already had a robo done, I would give YSC uh, an advantage here. But as is, I think it's, like, close to even. But it's such a strange spot to try to try to judge. He does lose a few Dragoons uh, getting out there. And, in fact, this will probably end up being a bunker just in case. Uh, no, actually throws down the engineering bay. I was going to say, this is uh, his... His setup is pretty darn strong defensively, and really what he should be worrying about here is the continuation of tech, whether that be Reaver or that be Dark, uh, Dark Templar. Okay, so shuttle on the way. Reaver tech should get started. There it is. And the worker count is very, very close. Within two right now, which Ample, again, should be happy with. Man, his, that Marine tank push, that is an interesting one. Feels like it kind of worked twice, right? Like, he, he killed Motive with it, and then here against YSC, who pulled all his probes, at least he got ahead worker-wise. If he hadn't started that command center when he had, uh, he definitely would be behind here. So taking a look, we have the turrets starting up for Anti-Reaver. He's doing a full wall here. His unit count is kind of low, and he doesn't have that bunker kind of as his stable defense. When you don't have a bunker, uh, sometimes it is better to do things like make a full wall. This would be against Zerg or against Protoss. Or sometimes even against Terran, <laughs> if you're facing a lot of vultures. Uh, we have the armory going. Yeah, a good solid SCV production and everything. And we'll see if he just goes into like a regular upgrade Terran type of play. Or he wants to get more aggressive. He is getting pretty quick vulture speed, but there's nothing, nothing wrong with that, I would say. Third Nexus has gone up now for YSC. Oh, I love that mine there. That's really, really useful. It'll completely tell him when that next base is coming. And now the Reaver is ready to go here from YSC. Ultra just kind of laying mines through the middle of the map, getting any sort of vision that they can at the moment. Pretty decent setup in the main, honestly. Like three tanks, two Marines, and a turret. That's some good defense, especially if he lays a couple mines. Like if you put a mine here... Here, here, something like that. Maybe here. Uh, any of those mines would be super helpful because then the shuttle doesn't really have anywhere at far range to unload. Here, you might unload, like, yeah, see, over here, like I was mentioning. You want to unload, like, kind of out of range of your opponent. Now, he does pick off that siege tank. Reaver plus the Zealot going up uh, will easily kill one siege tank. Flies out for now. Uh, there is shuttle speed on the way, by the way. This is just very, very normal for YSC. This is how he generally plays. We'll see if he ends up adding a second robotics or not. You don't necessarily have to. So, you know, it became very popular for a little bit, and then it actually fell out of popularity, and people are just using one uh, robotics and just consistently producing. But the second one can be useful. We saw YSC do it in the previous game. I think in the previous game, it was like the perfect situation for it here. 
more of a border case. I think more of a stylistic thing. Like, do you do you really think you can get damage done? Because if you look at how this is looking now, like these are beautifully laid mines. Uh, going to be very hard to get drops in there that deal serious damage. Throwing down, a, a, is this a turret as well? Yeah, another missile turret. They are really well placed. Like, you might want to fly over that, and then you fly into another one. Well placed army as well. Vulture still kind of rotating around the map. I tell you, after this strange beginning that we had, this really does look quite even. Third command center's coming, two more factories. Yeah, really not bad here for Ample. Uh, he is up six workers as well, and he has his commsats done, so that's some healthy stuff that we're seeing. YSC is not being particularly greedy or anything. He's actually making a fighting army right now. Uh, consistent production off of everything. Multiple Reavers. Like, he's got two already in the shuttle and one more on the way. Legs are coming. Plus one is coming. We have that uh, Templar Archives done. So, obviously, Storm is going to be one of the next things that he really wants. And a very slow push out by Ample. Now, do notice that it is a 20 supply lead for YSC right now, but he's down nine workers. So... This is kind of a funny thing. His army is much, much bigger. But if he utilizes his army and it doesn't do something somewhat significant, then that's where you get really far behind because your economy is not all that good and then your opponent held you with a much smaller army. And it's like, well, you lost everything when you're on three base. You really don't want to be losing big armies for as Protoss until you're on five bases, right? Even on four bases, if you're like attack moving and losing your entire army... Terran is generally ahead there because they are going for a more upgraded style. That's if they're in a, a more defensive spot. If they're doing like, a, let's say, like a two base attack where they lose their army and you kind of trade, then obviously you're ahead. Man, there's a lot of situations in StarCraft that need to be considered for every sentence I say. I'm like, well, you know, hold on. Either way, uh, a little bit of harassment here from the Reavers. Size Storm almost done. More Nexus getting set up. So there's the fourth base. Obviously, he knows about that because he had the mine there. Fifth base going to be taken. It looks like at this natural has a, dry, a couple Dragoons with the Observer. And now time for the double speed shuttle. But this is good defense. This is really good defense in the main base. These will get in and do some damage, but we'll see how much. A couple mines are here. So here we go. Drops out those first zealots. Gets three of them out. And in fact, he's going to lose the shuttle really quickly. The Reaver's going to go to work on these uh, on these depots. So it looks like he might cause a supply block. But Ample is very quick getting on top of this. Now, vultures don't actually battle well. As you can see, this is like 10 vultures already dead. Wouldn't mind him targeting one more scarab there. That would actually be the best thing he could do here, I think. Doesn't quite get it, so we might get the repair. In fact, this one shouldn't be able to be repaired. So this one's going to burn down no matter what, but definitely can save that depot. But that was that was a reasonably good drop defense. It wasn't like the cleanest with the vultures, but, you know, preventing yourself from losing a ton of depots is probably a good thing most of the time. Uh, that's, that's something that can be very powerful and has become more popular lately for Protoss players is targeting down these depot chunks. Because to fit your depots into main bases, the depot is like... You know, obviously the Overlord is easy to have as many as you need. They fly. Pylons, you need them all over the map as defensive structures. Uh, and they're very small, right? So you're not worried about that. Depots take a ton of room to max out. So like most main bases in the game, you, you will just have big squares of depots, which can be targeted down four at a time by double reaver drops. All right. Another attack coming in. Ooh, a side storm drop, but very quick reaction there from Ample, even quicker than me here with the full vision of the map. So it doesn't get the damage he was looking for there. In the meantime, a dropship is being sent out. Ooh, this has a lot of potential, actually. Uh, taking a look here. Yeah, he scans. He sees a probe, but you can do something like drop a tank here. Well, if a Nexus gets started, obviously you pick that off, but like drop a tank, drop two vultures, lay some mines. And that's going to be really annoying for Protoss to deal with if they don't have a speed shuttle nearby. In the meantime, a lot of Zealots have come out here for YSC. He's just kind of clearing mines right now with those Dragoons. You have to be careful when you go this Zealot heavy that you're not running into mines because that will absolutely destroy your army. It'll become so, so weak. Uh, and by the way, this the style that we see from YSC here, 
Uh, I do want to mention, right, because there's like a few different styles you can do worker-wise in Protoss vs. Terran, and we can see that he's actually staying below 60. This was very trendy about a year ago, where Protoss players started going up to about 55 probes or so. Here being 57, you know, obviously the same type of idea, but the idea is you're getting a much bigger maxed supply, so your attacks can be much, much more powerful. It might take a little bit longer to max out in some of these situations because you're not mining as much as if you're on like 70 probes, which is the other style kind of that you can see from Protoss where they, they get quite a few more, but it is going to give you just more supply than your opponent, right? Attacking supply. He's going to have quite a bit more here. A good 35 supply advantage attack-wise here from YSC. Attacks in. A great defense matrix there in the front. The High Templars not really getting anything done. These Zealots coming in from behind. The Dragoons have cleared most of the way, but I think this is going to be a pretty clear hold for Ample. YSC gets some Zealots on top of the Siege Tanks. Tries to do a Mind Drag there. Can't quite get it. And the armies basically equalize each other. Now look at this at the end of it. A seven supply advantage, uh, most of that in workers for Ample, but for sure that's better for Ample. Like he still, he kept a lot of tanks alive, like five tanks from the initial attacker there. Obviously we have rallies coming up as well. His fourth base didn't have to lift or anything like that. He didn't lose SCVs. He's got this solid economy. Uh, he does have two on upgrades. We don't see three, two started. So that's probably the biggest flaw that we see here from Ample. Like if three, two was halfway done right now, this that would be absolutely amazing for Ample, but as is, I think that that hold was really clean and really strong. Looking over at YSC's base, a couple more gates on the way. He does have double forge. Let's check his upgrades. Yeah, 2-1, same as Ample, and he's actually started as plus three first, so not something you see every day. The Protoss actually uh, out upgrading the Terran, but very nice for YSC, even though his upgrades don't scale quite as well. More gates being started in the bottom left as well. That's kind of a couple interesting ones. That's actually good against Vulture Raids. It's really, like, if you bring 12 Vultures down that are 3-2, th you know, obviously you should have already had 3-2 going, but, like, if you have a group of Vultures that are 3-2, they'll come in and kill all three cannons and all your probes. So, to have this here, it kind of makes them single file. It gives you more time to react. Uh, I like that setup. And, obviously, you can macro out of those as well. Now, really excellent turrets. I love these spreads. The mines, the vultures running out right now to lay even more mines out there. Looks like this uh, command center did get caught being built on location, but he gets it out of there. Doesn't take too much damage on it. So you can just re-expand to that fifth base a little bit later on. Definitely going to be something he wants to think about soon. Uh, and notice one thing I, I want to mention is Ample has not actually maxed yet. Well, hold on. We actually have a suicide high Templar drop coming in. Oh, no. He was definitely looking elsewhere. He was not expecting that to go down so quickly. So that's a little bit painful. Uh, but, you know, Ample, um, he, he hasn't been able to max out yet. That's what I was trying to talk about a little bit. Uh, and that's kind of, like, in a way, that's really good for YSC because there's not as much pressure being put on. But slowly but surely, he is doing this spread turret push. Right, and this is what I was talking about, how Allegro, the push distances between bases, this is pretty solid for Terran. You can see there's not that much unbuildable terrain. Most maps have, like, basically nothing can be built anywhere in the center. Here, you can actually put down a fair amount of supporting turrets. You can see him spreading and pushing this this army, uh, you know. It's kind of a slow push, but it's, it's deadly, and YSC knows. He's already evacuated most of the probes from his third base location. And his natural's not really well mined out either. So while he's getting these other bases to the south, he's going to be losing to. This is really high quality for Ample right now. Now, uh, it looks like YSC going to dive in here. He has a lot of zealots in these shuttles. I don't know how much damage they're going to get done. He is going to break the front part of the push, but I don't think he's going to get all the way back here. I think he's going to have to turn around. Like, we just hear zealots dying nonstop here. Oh, my God. The vultures with mines in the natural doing a fantastic job. No probes left up in that natural either. Only 51 workers here for YSC. Those 3-2 upgrades continue to chug forward. Now, Ample, like, that was a that was a pretty good attack, and he was pretty efficient. You can see that there's not really a bank here, and they're at very similar supplies, so that's always good for Terran. 
That doesn't mean he can just unsiege an attack. He's playing against Psystorm. He has to be very careful about things. But he needs to think about that additional base. And you can see he is right now. Sieges up a couple tanks. Bringing the vultures down as well to lay some mines. But if YSC brings his entire army, obviously, you know, this small amount of units is not going to be able to hold. So, okay, you know, you end up losing like a dragoon or two. But you kill off the tanks. You get the vultures out of there. You clear the mines. You, you prevent any more mining uh, to occur on a fifth base location. But in the meantime, Ample doing a counter push. He knows a bunch of the army is missing here. Would love to see these vultures lay mines all over the place here to stop this incoming flank. All right, going to run in once again. Units from both sides right now. In fact, from three different sides and from the air. YSC trying absolutely everything to bust through. But as these dragoons bleed to the right, the tanks in the back are here to fight. They are going to kill a lot of Dragoons here. More reinforcements coming up from Ample. A never-ending push indeed. And this is looking good from Ample, like the push. But the one thing that we have to keep looking at is, are you going to get this up in mining? Because let's take a look at the mining. Nothing. Nothing in like two seconds. Very low. Very low. One-fifth of the minerals remain or so. You know, that's... That's going to go out pretty quick. He has heavy saturation. This is very healthy, but you have to have basically two full mining bases. Uh, if you're in a Terran with three, two upgrades and you have three or uh, two mining bases, you're still in the game. All right. <laughs> There's very few circumstances where that's not true, but you need to maintain those. If you fall to one base, your supply just doesn't even move. Seriously. So that's something that Ample needs to consider here. Uh, whereas with YSC, it's like, okay. Pretty decent saturation. He's still making probes, so he'll get that up. Decent, still making probes. Well, not at that one, I guess, but I'm sure he will. Very good saturation. Terrible saturation. Terrible saturation. But he still has patches, right? He still has patches. And this is part of that style that I was talking about as well, where you have less workers. You're actually not mining as quickly. It's kind of like what Zerg does, right? Most Zerg players don't make that many drones, especially early on. So they're actually mining from all their bases at a higher efficiency overall than Terran for most of the game. So YSC going back through the center right now. He's just trying to zone everything back. I think that this setup is becoming stronger and stronger. A huge missile turret wall at this fifth base location. A decent amount of mines, some turrets, siege tanks coming down and being spread out as well. And look, he's fallen back into completely a defensive manner here so that he can also have a defensive manner here if you're pushing up here too many units are here and you can't defend down here so going double defensive i think is really really good triple shuttle coming in right now let's see if he can get some good storms off or anything he does drop out some high templars but doesn't cast them quickly enough the vultures absolutely ravage everything that comes out a couple storms go down but they do almost nothing and that is a huge advantage for Ample. A huge advantage. That was one of the poorest attacks that we have seen uh, in this series, maybe in this tournament so far. Definitely a mistake there by YSC. He thought he was going to be able to get in there and maybe wipe out part of that army or all of that army and get into this base. And hey, if you do that, maybe you're going to win the game. But what we just saw was like... What was it? Five High Templars with one storm going off, doing almost no damage. The rest of the Gateway Army just kind of melting under the pressure of the massively upgraded tanks and vultures. Where do you go from here as YSC? It's tough. He's making a couple Dark Templars. That's where there's a Dark Templar. There's a chance. More shuttles still coming out, but we have these upgraded Goliaths. We have more turrets. He's still got SCVs out here helping to make turrets as well. And as this push chokes this area off, I become more and more nervous for YSC. Let's count his gates outside of his main. One, two, three. So that's oh, that's that's going to make it a little bit rough. Like he needs to keep this path open so all of his gates can rally out still. Here we go. We're going to have these shuttles go in and try to help bust this. The Goliaths do a little bit of targeting. Okay, a couple of very decent storms right there. Now the Zealot's going to come in on top of everything. A lot of the Vultures were eliminated by that storm. Nice mine hit there. And he will have to pull back. As you lose all of your supporting units, the Dragoons simply cannot fight. Oh, my God. 
feel like he lost about eight Dragoons more there than he really should have. Just was a little bit late on pulling back. You know, the Zealots really are what are tanking the damage in the Protoss army. And when they're gone, you better have such an overwhelming Dragoon count that you kill everything or you better get out of there. Because the Dragoons are like kind of your long-term unit, right? Like even more so than High Templars. High Templars are very efficient a lot of the time, but you lose them very quickly. They're very low health, right? Whereas the Dragoons, it's like, well, you you kind of want to pull them back as the, the fight is, is wrapping up. And if you don't, well, now not only do you have to remake all your, your High Templars and your Zealots, but you don't even have a strong Dragoon force to continue to clear the mines. So some more uh, turrets going down here for Ample. Looks like he's reinforcing this area. Going to lay a few more mines and everything as well. DT. <laughs> Not sure what that DT's plan was. I don't think that was ever going to get into this space. Plenty of mines and turrets around everywhere. Vultures checking for any more Protoss bases. If this, I tell you, if he ran up this ramp, there's a bunch of cannons here. He'd be like, oh no, how'd that happen? <laughs> so maybe a little bit late checking it. But the right type of idea here. Additional Nexus going up here. Four YSC. He's down 20 supply right now. You know, he's he's delayed everything enough that this base, even though it had three probes on it for the longest time, is going to end up mining out. This is turning into like a pretty long and epic game right now, by the way. Once again, it is the double robo that we see from YSC a fair amount. Can he actually break this, though? I don't think so. All right, he's going to try. Flies through it. Drops off a lot of zealots. Okay, that's a good storm. Those were good zealot drops. He's killing the first frontal tanks very quickly. Okay. Like, this so far, this is this is going all right, but we are running out of zealots. So right about now is where you have to pull back. Okay. Only loses, like, one additional dragoon there. I think that that was actually... That was... Well, maybe not that, that high templar, but overall, I think that that was pretty solid. It opens up this area again so he can utilize his rally points, so he can utilize all of his gateways. But you got to make sure you just keep having attacks like that. Oh, God. Oh, God. This many siege tanks with 3-2 on high ground. Keep those dragoons away. Uh, this is actually, if you have a bunch of zealots, this is super easy to clear, but only the dragoons down there. Maybe you can get some more shuttles out to deal with that. I'm not sure if he has many right now. We have one right there full of high templars. Oh, no. He's leading with the Dragoons up the hill. Very painful indeed. The Vultures come up as well, losing a ton of units. This is this is looking to me like it's very... Well, very slowly, based on these very slow pushes, turning into an ample victory, which is kind of cool, right? Because, well, it's kind of not cool because if YSC loses here, it, that's kind of it for Protoss for a little bit, but... Uh, Ample, you know, it, we talk about his aggression so much, and almost every game he's had has been aggressive, and he hasn't been winning the longer games. But here he is, right? Here's base 5, here's base 6, base 7 on the way. So he's starting to split the map, and he's keeping some some heavy control. Like, look, he's got this area on lockdown, this area on lockdown, which gives him kind of the whole center. And if he can just control, like, here, there's no way you win this as Protoss. And that's what he's kind of working towards, right? He's got turret here. He's starting to put some mines on the high ground. He's starting to flow over this this little lip here. But yeah, like this this is the area, man. If he gets full control of that, YSC is going to die. And I think YSC knows this right now, right? Like he's down here. He's kind of battling at the moment, seeing what he can push back. Drops out a couple high Templars. Throws those storms down. Uh, not necessarily the greatest storms. Throws a few more, though. Oh, man. Very, very efficient for Ample still. YSC going to pull back. Maybe maybe he can deny a command center here. Yeah, I could. I, I think that'll get canceled. So that's, that's kind of nice at least. But not a ton of uh, other options going on right now. All right, YSC just running away. This is just buying him time. We hear a ton of scans all over the map. Just kind of checking what's at some of these frontal locations. Like, defense-wise, do you have anything there? How are the minerals doing? Is it, Like, for instance, this base he just scanned. Nothing left. This, this is, like, the least impactful part of the map right there. Doesn't matter. 
Uh, whereas this part, very, very impactful. Like, he cannot rally down right now. The tanks will start chipping him, making his units run into the mines and everything. Very dangerous uh, area there for YSC. And here is Ample starting to set up in this exact area that we were talking about. Uh, and, you know, just split map obviously is very, very good for Terran if you can actually hold on to it for any amount of time. Oh, a High Templar shuttle coming in. Let's see what he can do. There's not that many SCVs here, but, I mean, any damage to the economy can be good. Okay, there you go. Okay. Four plus one. Okay, five kills there with a couple storms. Can't complain about that. You know, that worker count is getting a little bit low. 45. That's that's not a very big economy. That's basically a two-base economy, right? Like, you can... It's not exactly... <laughs> StarCraft 1 economy definitely works a bit differently than StarCraft 2, but... Uh, you know, you can kind of look at it like you can support two bases on, on 44 workers. Now, the uh, Siege Shanks come up towards the 6 o'clock base. That's the importance of holding this area. It's that this base can't really be kept alive. And since he already took this one, this is the only way for YSC to equal out the uh, actual income overall through the course of the game. And since Terran is generally more cost efficient, that's incredibly important. Now, YSC trying to break through. Sensing that maybe there were too many units pulled from this area. The thing is, I think a lot of them just went to this high ground. So 11 tanks on high ground. He's got to be careful. You see the goons just absolutely getting shredded from the center. Ooh, a nice mine hit there as well. Not that much left over on this side. But so hard to actually make any progress. I feel sad for YSC that he doesn't have, like, an Arbiter or something. I know he went mass speed shuttles. They kind of overlap. But it feels like he needs such a big move to come back. And the thing is, the, the type of style that he went for, like the, the Psy Storms and uh, the shuttles and everything, unless your opponent does a very clumped up attack, this doesn't have finishing potential. That's the, that's the main thing. It's the best fighting composition. It's the best harassing composition. Like, for instance, if fighting meaning if your opponent is attacking you, you fight super well with this. It's so good defensively with storms. And then harassment, obviously, is the best harassment because you have, like, mass high Templars, Reavers, speed shuttles, things like that. But you can't finish with this. You have to either grind them down or they attack into you poorly, that type of thing. Like, or, you know, and if they do that, you just kind of take the map and... And they'll end up dying over time. But yeah, again, it's like it's gateway units plus Psy Storm. And against these spread out positions where it's like mines, turrets, seed shanks that are spread, you just you don't you don't have a way to get in there and, and end the game, right? It's not like carriers, it's not like an, an arbiter recall or something like that. Now in comes YSC once again, trying to break through, and he'll kill some of the tanks. But I don't think you're gonna convince me that that is uh that that's efficient. <laughs> Ample's got to feel better and better every time that this is happening. As long as he continues to macro and rallies in, you're never going to break this. Especially with these bases starting. This is a crucial base. The fact that he has this and some turrets covering him taking this base here, like his economy is getting crazy. Now he is a little bit spread, right? We're a little bit spread out here. So units all up here, and then you got, like, a bunch over here that aren't truly doing very much. You got some here. You were attacking up here, so that makes sense. But the the win condition here for Ample is kind of, like, choking this area and just keeping these bases alive. So it's a good way that he's doing it, right? Like, more turrets. Keep your tanks here. Spread them out. It would be great to see him spread these out as well. And, of course, as I mentioned, keep these bases in the bottom right alive. It's just... <laughs> for, for Protoss to get that cost efficient, again, it's like either you go carrier or Terran is, like, too clumped and your size storms are doing a lot. And you can just see he's refusing to do that. This is really the only bad clump that we have. And maybe a little bit there, but really those... <laughs> it's not that impactful right now. All right, so that gets cleared up as well. Do scans going down as he figures out how everything's looking. Scanning this base and seeing the minerals almost gone should be making him feel good. This base, the minerals are almost gone. YSC is almost out of money. 
And this is like the last base that's realistic for him to take. He'll never take these ones because if he kills these, then the game is going to end anyways. So these bottom right bases are just not realistic. And that means that he's fighting against three mining bases to basically one and he's hoping to get two. So honestly, I think YSC has one more attack in him and that's it. That's really what it looks like here. All right, YSC coming out. He's trying for it. He does get a bunch of zealots on top of those very clumped siege tanks. The siege tanks on the high ground are gone. Okay, okay, this is maybe the best bust yet in a lot of ways. More tanks are rallying up. Some Psy Storms going off and missing right there. Okay, a very solid Psy Storm follow-up. Ooh, good defense matrix is on those frontal tanks. And he does have to pull back. That was like a pretty good engagement for a while, but now his tanks come from the, oh my God, from the high ground as well as those vultures. Okay, YSC is just about out. Done. Very close to done. And once again, his units have a hard time moving around the map right now. I love that he just keeps rebuilding the turrets, by the way. Please rebuild the turrets. Yes! <laughs> Ample really has a good handle on this game, truly. You know, sometimes you'll get a Terran and they'll be like, well, it's time to attack. It's like, actually, the absolute best play here is to not give him any more efficiency, right? Don't attack move into uh, Psy Storm. You've got the whole map. He's not going carrier. That's the only thing you would be afraid of at this point. So just spread it out, rebuild your turrets, relay your mines, and all of his attacks are going to continue to look that same exact way. And if they do that, that's going to be the end of the game because that's literally what this game was over and over and over. It was YSC trying to break out of this slow, strong, contained slash push and Ample just continually resetting it up. Right, Vulture's running through the center, tries to catch them with a little bit of a size storm. Figuring out some of those mines. YSC looking for maybe one more fight here. That's the only thing I can think. He has to know that there's like a bit too much to ever really break. All right, he's bringing out the rest of his units. Here we go, Archons and Zealots. He's doing a full flank here. And he should be able to clear the tanks down to about here. But with the reinforcements coming up, that's all he's going to be able to do. Oh my god, EMP on the Archons. <laughs> oh, they just absolutely evaporate. Oh, it's crazy. And, well, that's going to be that, guys. It looks like YSC, unfortunately, going to be eliminated from the tournament. Ample is going to advance. Definitely showed off uh, some really awesome TVPs within this group. It's sad to see YSC go out, by the way. Uh, he is a very good Protoss player. I actually do enjoy his games quite a bit. His double robo style is very neat. Uh, but in this particular game, showing what can go really well against it, right? The spread tanks, that slower style. And with this being the last mining base, right? This game is going to have to get called GG Ample Advances.